Hey, well, what's up guys? It's Baby Bear 4812 coming at you once again. Today we're going to be solving the uh, letter combinations of a phone number problem. You may have seen this one before. It's a it's a relatively popular problem. I'd say it's ranked medium, uh, which I think is appropriate because it is a touch tricky, but in fairness, I do think it gives people a bit more of a hard time than maybe it necessarily needs to. So I'm hoping to, to clarify any, any fear or doubt about it because I want to make sure that when you get this in your interview, you're going to crush it, you're going to land that job at Google, you're going to make bank, you're happy, I'm happy, everybody's happy. So let's dive into it. The problem says as follows, if we, if I can just zoom into it, it says we're given a string containing digits from two to nine inclusive that represent all possible combinations that the number could represent. Um, essentially, for those of you who are, I guess at this point, old enough, kind of like me to, not that I'm that old, uh, to remember having these uh, these little old school phones, each button would kind of represent a few different uh, characters. So uh, you had on the number two, it could be A or B or C, three could be D, E, F, and, and so on and so forth. I think you get the gist of it. Uh, in an example input, we get a two followed by a three, and we need to output all the possible combinations of the letters that could be represented by. Um, the ones we see here, A, D, A, E, A, F. Uh, so as in this A here and then the D, E, F, B, D, B, D, B, E, B, F, yada, yada. I think you guys get it. In case you don't, just to make it super, super crystal clear, um, the, oh, let's get the pen going. Uh, the, the letter two could be, you know, it could begin uh, with an A, and then uh, the three could be a, a D, an E, or an F. Uh, a could also be B or C. Each of those can, again, go to D, E, or F. And in total, we're going to have those, those nine possible combinations. Now, um, one thing that may come to mind, uh, this is a very simplistic approach, and I'll be honest, it came to my mind as well. It's not very feasible, but you know, imagine we only have two numbers here. Uh, one could make the argument that you could simply uh, do a, a double nested for loop and, and kind of walk through the characters in A, or the characters that map from two and the characters that map from three, and there we go. If you had a third number, you can make a triple nested for loop. If you have four numbers, you can make four. I think you guys get where the issue is going with this. Like on n numbers, first off, that's not feasible and that's not very dynamic. Um, technically, I guess that is kind of a brute force approach, kind of, but again, it's not it's not very feasible whatsoever. Uh, there's nothing in this problem kind of stating that uh, there will only be two digits. So we can infer that, that there will be n digits at any given time. So where do we want our heads to go now? Well, we need to go through a certain you know, mapping. We need to map all these possible combinations of different numbers, but we don't necessarily know how many numbers are going to be. Um, in a scenario like that, where your head should be going when you need to find out almost the depth of something, because in a way, this, this is the depth. We're going to be stepping through different layers. Um, our heads should go to recursion. If that wasn't necessarily obvious, stick with it. Maybe, you know, so definitely go through the rest of this video so you can get a feel for it. Maybe go back to some slightly uh, easier recursion videos, which I, I do have on my channel. Go take a look at those. Um, some easier recursion problems, excuse me, first before, before we dive into this. But nevertheless, we are going to be using recursion for this. One thing that usually trips a lot of people up uh, within the kind of the recursion space is they forget that there are two principles that are based that we need to keep in mind when solving recursive problems. And those two go as follows. The first that we need to keep in mind is, so number one is going to be, what is our terminal condition? Terminal condition. So terminal condition means when do we stop our recursion? When have we gone deep enough to say, okay, whoa there, hold your horses. We went just a step too far. We're done here. Let's pull it right back. That's the terminal condition. The second is going to be what we call the actual recursive relationship. Recursive relationship. Recursive relationship kind of meaning um, at what point are we going to be making this, this recursive call? When do we say, okay, I'm at, you know, I'm at a certain instance and now uh, given that a certain thing happens, I'm ready to now take a, a, a step deeper. If that explanation was very clear, let me know in the comments down below. I'll, I'll, I'll try to come up with maybe a more succinct explanation of it. But I think when we go through the example, it'll make a bit more sense. Um, so just the general approach we want to take before we dive into the code, keeping these two things in mind, what we're going to want to do is to say, let me, uh, 
let me take my, my, my number A and for every single A, uh, I'm sorry, I'm kind of presumptuously here going with the, the assumption that we, we still have this example two, three. I'm gonna keep using this as an illustration just to walk through the logic. The, we're gonna start with an A and then you know two kind of mapped to, to ABC and, and three mapped to DEF. Again, please excuse my penmanship. It's, a, it's not a very good pad that I'm using here. Um, now, given that this is the case, we're going to try A with every combination of three that we can find. So that'll be D, E, and F. Then we're gonna say, let's do the same thing with B. We'll do D, E, and F, and same thing with C, and I think you guys get the pattern. So I think at this point, we're ready to dive right in and, and take a look at, see what the code looks like. So I did cheat a tiny bit in order just to save a bit of time in the video. The first thing that we need to do is to actually say, okay, what digit maps to what letter? That ain't tough because we see a picture of it right over here on the on the left hand side. Thing is, we gotta type it out, and I didn't want you guys to waste your time watching me type it all out on screen. So I just I kind of went ahead and, and typed it out beforehand, um, so you're not sitting there watching me get after it. And basically, what I've done is I've said um, for every every number we've we've mapped the possible letters that go with it. Notice notice that the input we are given here is a string; it's not an integer. Meaning that if I'm, I'm walking through the string one digit at a time, those digits are in fact represented with strings, which is why the key here, my key value pair, um, is, is a string. As well, strings are, they're kind of, we can iterate through them, meaning that, you know, you could put the A, B, C, D, E, F, and all the characters in arrays, but strictly speaking, it's not really necessary. So for simplicity's sake, I just kind of left it as strings. Before we do that, as for always, we are gonna to wanna to do a really quick error check. And I guess in this case, we can simply say that um, if we're not really given any, any input for digits, we're going to want to return an empty array. Now, what I'm gonna do here is I'm actually going to call, well, we're gonna to need to be doing kind of this recursive walkthrough. I'm gonna use a trick that's very common in recursion. Um, you've seen me do it. You've seen a lot of other YouTubers who use it as well, um, which will be calling, kind of having this main body function here with just a few lines of code and then calling a helper function that's going to do all our dirty work for us. So what I'm going to want to do is I'm actually going to want to return uh, some function that will call maybe make uh, make combination so that that's actually going to create this combinations array for us that we're going to return at the end of the day. There are a few things that I'm going to have to put into this into this recursive function. Um, if this seems overwhelming, if, if this is kind of the first time you're, you're seeing this problem, uh, the more you expose yourself to problems like these, this will start to come a lot more second nature and the logic will start to build into your brain exactly why it is that we're doing it as, as follows. Um, but that's just a heads up again if you're watching for the first time, because I know first few times I saw it, I was like, there's no way I'm gonna ever get this. I problem, I problem. I promise you will. It, it will make sense in just a bit. We're gonna need to pass, like I said, a few pieces of information through that we're gonna keep with us. The first is going to be the, the digits that we got, right? The actual numbers. The second is going to be these mappings, which we conveniently created. And we're also going to need a few more things. One thing we're going to need is, um, first off, the index that we're starting from. Index being when we iterate through the, the digits one by one, kind of the two and then the three, I need to know where I'm pointing to. So I'm going to say that index is zero. And um, maybe kind of as I go, I'll, I'll be defining this function just so I can kind of keep that congruency and, and it'll make sense as I go. Mappings, then this will be our, our index. Uh, a couple more things that we're gonna need to do. I'm going to want to keep uh, a, a string of currently where I'm at, one that I'm gonna be appending my different combinations onto and passing it through my recursive calls. So this maybe I can just call current. And finally, one more thing is I actually wanna keep an array that I'm gonna call uh, result, or I'll, just, I'll call it combinations. This is going to be the result in array such that when we when we return what this recursive call gives us, it will give us that that array. I'm going to be passing this through the function as I make my recursive calls in order to keep appending the combinations appropriately. Again, if that doesn't make sense, you can pause the video, rewind a couple minutes, try to digest it again. Um, otherwise, stick with it, and, and as we walk through kind of the next few minutes, I really hope it'll make a bit more sense. Now. At the top of this helper function, this is where we most commonly, pretty much always, define our terminal condition. If I make my recursive call, when do I say, whoa, hey there, like, let's take a step back. You've gone too far, dude. No more recursion for you. In this case, 
we have to think about the fact that as we're doing our recursive calls, we are going to be pushing our index further and further. Our index is just some integer that'll be pointing to different values in our, our, our digits variable. Thus, if index ends up being greater than or even equal to the, the length of digits, we want to simply say, let's just, we need to return the combinations because if we use that index now, we're gonna get an out of bounds exception. We're searching way, or not even way, at least one step outside of the, the length of our digits variable. So that's gonna be a no-go. The one thing that I will wanna do is, is kind of, as I'm going through these combinations, I'll be building up a, a current uh, place, or not even a placeholder variable, but a, a kind of a current list of, of where I've gotten to so far. And so what I'm gonna to wanna to do is I'm gonna to wanna to take my combinations array, append that current value that I have, which will be values like AD or AE or, or AF and, and so on. Once I get to the end of my string, I wanna say, okay, I've made this as long as it can be. I'll append it into my final result into array, and then I'm just gonna return that array. And that's pretty much the crux of, of how we get this done. Rather, I shouldn't say that, there's one more step that gives us the uh, the crux of how we get it done, and that is to actually uh, walk through the all the characters. So all of the characters that we're interested in, uh, or all the digits, I should say, will be as follows. We're pointing at a certain index right now. So I'm gonna wanna say for every character uh, in mappings of, and this is gonna look maybe a bit confusing, digits of index. So what that means is I want to look at the, I'm pointing at one number in that, in that digits variable, and I want to check the mappings object for that number. So if that number is, is three, I want to loop through each of D and E and F. If that number is six, I want to walk through each of M and N and O. Does that make sense? With every single one of these calls, what I'm going to want to actually do now is to simply say, let me let me set my combinations variable. I want to set it equal to whatever the result is of this of this recursive call. Um, and this recursive call is going to be again what we'll call this function on itself. So we'll call make combinations of digits is the same, mappings are the same. Index now is going to be plus one. We are or plus one. We are looking at the characters at a given index right now. We now want to call it the combination of all the next letters that we're going to see. So I'm going to call index plus one. Current is the current uh, string that we're tracking, or current combination. And, well, oh, excuse me, guys. I'm not picking my nose up. I promise. It's just super itchy. Um, current is going to be the, the string that we're at right now. Oh, I can spell. Plus this letter that we're looking at right here. Okay? So if I'm, I'm doing my recursive call, and uh, I want to loop through, like I said, each of A and B and C. Once I get to A, I'm then going to say that I need to set this combinations value to whatever the return value is here. And what that return value will be is when we get to that A, we're going to make another recursive call onto the next digit. Okay, That next digit is going to be, for example, 3. If we have this, we continue with this example of 2, 3. Once I get to 3, I want to loop through each of the characters in 3. And, and make another recursive call that will eventually append the current string that I'm on. When I make this call, when I'm looking at the letter A on the number two, when I call the number three, I wanna look at D and I wanna look at E and I wanna look at F. Once I'm done with those, my combinations with A are completed. I've now taken a step back off of the stack, looking now at the letter B and doing the D, the E and the F and so on and so forth. Again, I hope that makes sense. If it doesn't, please ask any clarifying questions in the comments below. I promise I'll do my best to clarify. Finally, the last thing that I need to pass in is the, the combinations array as it is right now. Eventually, we're gonna loop through all these and uh, no matter what, come hell and high water, we gotta return the, the combinations at the end of the day. Once we do all these walkthroughs, we need to return the combinations. That'll basically be this, this return value that we're gonna pop off here in our main function. Um, so, this should be it. If I didn't make any, any kind of blatantly horrendous mistake, I'm gonna click Submit here, and hopefully, if all goes according to plan, we will submit it, and there's something that I missed. It says, make combination takes five positional arguments, but six were given, okay? Ah, so what I forgot to do is I, I forgot to pass self into here when I, I defined it, because it is a, this is a method belonging to the solution class. Um, take two. And there we go. So, 
I hope that makes sense, guys. It, it's a bit of an involved problem, like a lot of these recursive ones are. They're not always necessarily intuitive, especially not this trick of, of having one bulky or one kind of main robust function and then a, a bigger helper that does the majority of the large lifting or the heavy lifting, excuse me. Um, any questions about any of this, leave them in the comments down below. Whatever other questions you want me to answer, uh, also leave it down below. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like, subscribe for more good content. Or I hope it's good content. And yeah, see you guys next time. Peace.